Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I discuss foam board RC plane design lesson learns and considerations with two of my original foam board RC plane designs, the foam bug and the rocketeer. Let's get to it. I've been building RC model airplanes for many years. I've also had the good fortune to design six original, original designs of RC model planes that have been published in the modeling press. Like you, I watch RC videos on YouTube and I discovered or learned about foam board building techniques for RC planes a few months ago. It looked very interesting, so I thought I would give it a shot. For those of you new to foam board, this is foam board. It comes in sheets 20 inches by 30 inches. It's readily available, a uh, wide range of stores, dollar stores, <coughs> craft stores, even at Amazon. It's typically 3 16 of an inch thick, paper on both sides, this happens to be black paper. You can have white paper on the covering. As you can if you get a little bit of a close up, you can see that we can peel off the paper. We typically do that because the paper doesn't age well and the covering can be sanded, except some heat shrink tape, uh, covering tape, etc. And just to give you an idea of the foam board, it's fairly strong depending how it's applied and you can make successful RC model airplanes with that. I, because I've never dealt with a foam board before, I made a quick rapid prototype just to see, learn how to, the things glue together, how it uh, operates. And that first airplane was what I called the foam bug. And you can see the picture above of the foam bug, the high wing design. I took that foam bug design, it, it flew quite well and modified the design on, on a TurboCAD. And I took the high mounted wing, made it a low uh, wing, added landing gear and modified the tail structure to make the Rocketeer. So in this video, we'll go over some detail on both of these airplanes, what I was thinking about when I designed it, lessons learned that will help you if you want to build a, a um, foam airplane that will be strong and last for a period of time. Finally, there are plans available for the foam bug, excuse me, for the Rocketeer. You see above, they are shown with the top view and the side view. There is a six inch ruler with each plan. If you screen capture the plan and print it out, you can uh, figure out the mathematical enlargement formula from that uh, six inch ruler to make a full size set of plans or a smaller or larger version if you want. This is my first uh, prototype for a foam board airplane. I call it the foam bug. It was put together very quickly just to get an idea of sizes, shapes, how things would fly. So I'm going to take off the wing and go through this. But first, let's take a look at a video to see how the foam bug flies. Is the wing of the foam bug. It's a 40 inch wingspan. Note the foam board is only 30 inches wide so you're gonna to have to make two halves of the wing to have the complete wing. Uh, what I use to join it at the center section is a combination of this drywall uh, reinforcement tape with hot glue on side of it. That makes a very easy reinforcement mechanism for uh, various portions of the model to include the, wing, uh, the lower wingspan itself. In addition, if you look inside, they use popsicle sticks, which are very available at craft stores. They're very easy to use reinforcement mechanism between the dihedral joints and other portions of the wing, such as the control horns for the ailerons. This is just the end of a popsicle stick with a hole in it. The wing is made from foam board using the arm and wing, wing, uh, arm and wing technique. I'll put a card up top that shows you how you can make one of the wing panels in just 10 minutes. If you take a look at this cutaway sample, you can see that the foam board is literally folded around the um, wing like this. The spar are two one inch uh, sections of the foam board one inch back. By gluing these two foam board spars together and gluing it to the top and bottom of the wing and gluing at the end, it's a surprisingly lightweight, strong structure with a very reasonable airfoil shape. 
Let's take a little bit more look at the fuselage. It just, it, I was kind of designing this as I built it. The length of the fuselage, is, and the same ones on the plans, it's 30 inches long. That's the maximum width of the foam board. I just made that the uh, length of the fuselage. I decided to put three layers of foam together for the fuselage for enough, a little bit of rigidity. And that's a pretty strong uh, fuselage, I think, for what I'm doing. Note also that I took the drywall reinforcement tape with hot glue, put it all along here just to make the fuselage a little bit stronger on both sides. I added layers of foam on the top of the fuselage to have some sort of mounting for the wing. And again, I think that worked out well. I used dowels to hold down the wing. It's a quick and easy way to put a wing on. There's really no place for a mounting bolt on something like this. Note also the reinforcement tape on the dowels. I added additional layers of foam for the nose mounting, and I used 1 16th inch plywood for the motor mount. The 1 16th inch plywood was adequate for a couple flights, but it's not good for a long-term solution. On the Rocketeer, subsequent designs, I'll be using 1 8th inch plywood to um, make sure that's strong enough. Note also the popsicle sticks for the uh, push rod guides with uh, the reinforcement tape to hold them in place. And then um, the same for the control horns on the elevator. Note also that for this iteration of the design, just to experiment, I used packing tape, and this is red electrical tape for decoration. Packing tape is a methodology to cover a foam RC model. The packing tape is cheap, it's lightweight, it looks great, but it's very sticky. You've got one chance to put that on, so do experiment with the packing tape on flat surfaces. It's a much bigger challenge to put it on to an existing model like I did here, but again, just all practice to see what would work on this model. So overall, oh, one other thing I want to mention. <clears throat> on this model, I didn't know where the center of gravity was going to be. And um, obviously you want it about 25% in from the leading edge of the wing. So what I did on this one, I installed the motor. It's the same motor that I transferred to the Rocketeer. That's why it's not on this model. I put in the receiver, the two servos, and then I used the battery fore and aft to determine where the battery should be to have the correct center of gravity for this airplane. With this airplane, the, the battery was in front of the wing. It worked out fine for the CG. Because the battery is, is a relatively heavy thing with the other parts of the model, it'll be very important that you take the time before you commit to the place for that battery to figure out where it's going to be. The reason I mention this is important, you'll see on my next plane, the Rocketeer, because of the addition of landing gear, um, or more weight to the front of the airplane, I had to put the battery in the middle of the wing to achieve the correct center of gravity. And one final thing, when I did put on this battery, again, it was a very quick design. There has to be some way of securing it to the airplane. What I did was I simply put a dowel on the other side, packing tape to hold that in place with hot glue. Notice, obviously, when I landed in the landing gear, it broke the dowel behind it. Again, just part of the quick design process of this aircraft. So this is my second design for a foam board airplane. I call this the Rocketeer. The same dimensions, roughly the control surfaces, as the foam board that we discussed previously. Now the three big changes are the wing went from a high-mounted wing to a low-mounted wing. I added landing gear, and just to have some fun, the tail surfaces, I changed the shape. The shape of this tail surface is that of an F4 Phantom. Again, just to have some fun at the flying field. So with that introduction of the Rocketeer, let's take a look at a video to see how this airplane flies. Ooh. As you can see, the rocket here flies great. It just, it just, just like uh, very similar hand, handling characteristics of the foam bug, uh, the planes, both of them weigh about one pound, two ounces, which is pretty light for an airplane of this size. It has plenty of power. It's an E-Flight Park 370 electric motor off of a two-cell LiPo. I fly most of my flights at about half throttle. 
Um, so again, any uh, motor that works for playing a little over one pound should be suitable. But just due to the um, ease of construction of the foam board, you can make a fairly lightweight model. I think that contributes greatly to the success of any flying model. So again, it's the same deal with uh, two wings that had to be joined in a half, the drywall reinforcing tape and the popsicle sticks for the central line uh, joint mechanism work fine. Control surfaces, size and throw on the foam bug are about right, so I kept that with the uh, Rocketeer, just a little bit different change in the shape. The other thing I did that was different was I used iron-on covering. This is a lightweight Monaco covering I used in the entire model. The foam board accepts this very well. It's just a, a good uh, fit, and this will provide a durable wing for uh, this model or any future model with the covering. This is the fuselage, and you can see that I made a few design changes. Uh, the, the side uh, cheek cowls for the engine, the electronic speed control is located right here. The receivers, notice because of the weight of the landing gear in the front, there's a fair amount of weight with the wire and the wheels, so to have the correct center of gravity, the battery is located right here at these straps, and I did put in a strap for the battery. The servers are located outside. Again, good control runs to the controls and really nothing significant to report there. I did elect to use a popsicle stick along here just to have a little spar for the stabilizer. I think that's worthwhile. I put a little bit of a popsicle stick up here so that the control horn would have something um, strong to glue onto. After a few flights, you find out where the weak areas are, and I know this is not a strong method of construction for a fairly large airplane like this with a profile fuselage. It turns out that there were some cracks by the front of the airplane where the uh, motor is located, as well as just aft where the land, landing gear is. Again, very easy to fix. If you look closely, there's a overlap of a popsicle stick here to keep the fuselage strong, as well as on the bottom and a few popsicle sticks on the side to keep the cowling front. There's a lot of stress up here with the landing gear and the motor. What I would do for a future build for a profile motor model like this, and I'll, I'll do for any future things along this nature, is what is best is to have some 1 8 inch plywood all the way from the firewall back to at least the midsection of where the wing is, and the plywood should just follow the shape of the fuselage fuselage along here. That 1 8th, 1 8th inch plywood would be in the middle. You could put the foam board on other sides to build out the profile fuselage. And that way your landing gear can be all the way around the plywood and sewn with a thread or dental floss to that plywood crutch to have a very strong uh, mounting mechanism for the landing gear. In addition, you could take the 1 8th inch plywood that can be epoxied onto the face of the um, profile of the 1 8, 1, 1 8 inch ply to make that all a rigid structure. I did like I did on both models. I, you can't see them, but I took some dowels and took it from the firewall and pushed them in with glue into the foam just to keep everything in place. You can also see in the fuselage the um, lightweight Monaco covering uh, works fine. I think it adds to the model. And also, I did. Do some experimentation with vinyl decals. Uh, they came along fine. Again, I'll give a card for how you can make your own decals for a model airplane like this. So in conclusion, I think foam board is very interesting and viable building material for RC model airplanes. It's inexpensive, it's readily available, it's quite easy to work with. It can accept coverings, um, a very inexpensive covering like um, a strip of packing tape or a iron-on covering, and it does lend itself to a wide range of models. Uh, one of the big attractive features of the foam board is it's a, light, it's a lightweight material so you can build models much lighter than you would from the regular construction of balsa and plywood. Another thing to keep in mind, it was common back um, in the early days of RC modeling to make the wings out of foam. Uh, the, they were hot wire cutting techniques that made a very accurate airfoil. They would resist warping, they were just a good way to make a wing and what would happen is you would get these foam wings and then you would add them to a regular balsa and plywood fuselage. That is something to keep in mind with these arm and wings. You build the wing very careful, uh, very quickly and you may consider just using regular balsa and plywood to make a more normal fuselage for the wing for your RC model airplane. So again, thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, best of luck with your design efforts with foam board and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.
Ooh.